Hello, my Fitness Rx for Women viewers. This is Ashley Kay here. Today I want to talk a little bit about training shoes. What training shoe is good for what training day? What body part? What, what are you doing? Cardio? Lifting? We're going to go through all of that, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, you see I have two different shoes here. Do you see the difference? One of them is my lifting shoes, and one of them is my cardio slash running shoes. Can you tell which one is which? I'm going to start out with my lifting shoe. As you can see, it's got a very flat bottom. The insole, there isn't much arch there, not much support. It's pretty basic. I actually got this shoe for $30. Pretty cheap, right? The reason I use this for weightlifting is because there isn't any cushion to absorb my lifting. So I feel all the weight in my heels just like I should. And this right here is my cardio and running shoe. Now this shoe is a little bit more expensive. I think it ran about $120. Um, it's by a brand name Mizuno, which I love. I've been using Mizunos ever since I started running in, in uh, high school. But as you can see here, it's got quite a bit of cushioning and support. I even added an extra insole to fill my arch. Now with cardio and running shoes, it's more important that you get a high quality shoe. This fits my foot to a T. I have a higher arch, so I made sure that when I bought my running shoe, it fit properly. One of the biggest problems people will have when buying running shoes is that their arch doesn't fit the support in there. So if you have a high arch, don't buy a low arch shoe, and vice versa. If you have a low arch, don't buy a high arch shoe. This can lead to injury. It's best to go to a running store or any knowledgeable sporting goods store that can help fit you with a good shoe. Because each runner is unique in how much they train, what running style they use, there is no perfect running shoe. The best running shoe for you depends entirely on the shape of your foot, your biomechanics, and the amount of running you do. Running shoes are designed to handle the shock of two and a half times your body weight that is created by the impact each time your foot strikes the ground. When you're running, you want to have excellent cushioning in both the heel and the forefoot to handle this impact. If you plan on running three times or more a week, move up to a real running shoe. Here are some things to look for when buying a running shoe. Superior cushioning, flexibility in the right places, stability or motion control, traction on roads or trails, nighttime reflectability, and breathability. While running shoes were meant to have soft, compressionable soles that were designed to absorb the impact while running, jumping, and cutting side to side, when choosing a lifting shoe, the criteria is a little bit different. Lifters need their feet to create a strong, stable base. This allows the heels and midfoot to drive into the floor to make those glutes and hamstrings work more effectively. When wearing compressionable shoes, the shoe absorbs much of the energy required to complete this movement. To provide a completely stable surface under hundreds of pounds of pressure created by weight of the load, look for a shoe with a hard, dense sole. No squishy heels allowed. Choose a shoe with a proper fit. The shoe should hug the foot to provide a proper support. Still can't decide on a lifting shoe? Maybe you should just go with the classic Chuck Taylor. Flat-soled shoes work great for squats and deadlifts. Thank you guys for watching. You can catch more of my Keep It Fresh with Ashley K video tips and tricks on fitnessrxwomen.com.